Hello, this is Dan Alford with Arc Specialties. There's an old saying that if your only tool is a hammer, the whole world looks like a nail. The same thing's true in automation. At Arc Specialties, we have a whole toolbox full of solutions for automation problems. We build around PLCs, CNCs, and robots. Over the last 30 years, robots have gotten faster, smarter, and easier to program, so a greater percentage of our projects are robotic. But the exception proves the rule. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how, on occasion, dedicated machines are superior to robots. So I'm gonna walk you through the process that we go through when we determine how to build a system. Gotta draw you a Venn diagram. This circle here, it's people. This circle here, this is robots. And this circle here, these are machines. By this I mean something optimized and specific built to do a certain task. There's still a place in the world for people. If it requires artistic input or relies heavily on adaptive control where a human has to adapt to changing environment or changing parts, let a person do it. If you can automate with a robot, these have now become commodities. These robots are quite inexpensive per axis and they're also quite flexible. So if you have a changing product line and you want to be able to weld widgets today and gadgets tomorrow, robots are probably the way to go. There's a certain group that will be satisfied with all of them. Any one of them would work. But we're all about optimization. And that's what brings us down here to machines. And machines are optimized for a specific task. In school, they would teach us that if you're doing a whole lot of something and you want to do it very, very fast, you build a machine that does nothing but that and does it over and over, does it very repeatably, very quickly. And so it's not unusual for us to decide that although something might possibly be solved by people, robots, or machines, the best technique might be a dedicated machine. They always say that exceptions prove the rule, so I'm going to show you two different systems where machines were, in our opinion, the best solution to the manufacturing problem. This part's a great example. High production volume so you can justify automation. But the challenging part is after we're finished welding this part, the total indicated runout must be less than three thousandths of an inch. Doable with a robot, but in this case we chose to do it with a dedicated machine. We don't need six axes on this part. We only have three axes for the torch, one for the part. The real challenge is in all the sensor systems. We have cameras to detect the part. We have infrared thermometers to measure the preheat temperature prior to welding. All of this was built into a small cabinet with a small footprint. So let's load the part and run it. So we load the part into the cradle. The cradle raises up and then it grips between centers. The camera confirms we have the right part. And then what you see here is we're measuring the runout. You can never tack the parts perfectly. So you measure the runout and find out where the high point is. And we start on that high point and count on welding distortion to actually pull the part into alignment. So this one was uh, four thousandths of an inch out of alignment. This is a arc own image of the autogenous weld being made. We don't use any wire. We're simply fusing the two parts together. Greatly simplifies the welding process and you end up with some beautiful beads. After we're finished, torch retracts, goes back to the home position. And you can see that our pre-run out was four thousandths of an inch, almost five. But afterwards, we actually straightened it with welding. Here's our second example, a food grade stainless cylinder. This is actually fabricated with some of our robots, but when it comes to welding the studs on the end using the drawn arc process, we chose to build a dedicated machine. Why? Because we don't need very many axes. We only have two axes to manipulate the welding system and one servo axis for precision rotation. So let's load apart and weld it. So this process doesn't require a lot of motion. We have only two axes for the drawn arc stud welder one axis to rotate the part. Most of the money went into the fixturing. So we're clamping the part in place, pressing the start button. We have a bowl feeder down below. It just fed a stud into the stud welding gun. The gun comes down, we draw an arc, and we secure one stud in place, rotate precisely 90 degrees, put the other four studs in place, and then the process is over with. It's, it's that easy. We open the door, we can take the part out, and what you have here is a finished part with four mounting studs firmly welded in place. So the point I was trying to make today 
is there's more than one solution to a problem. Sometimes the best man for a job is a human being. Sometimes the best solution is a robot. And sometimes an optimized, dedicated machine might be your best solution. At Arc Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.